Hello there. For almost a fortnight, the British Conservatives will keep the nation in suspense. Then, after long weeks of uncertainty, it should finally be officially clear who will succeed the outgoing Prime Minister Boris Johnson as party and government leader. According to the polls of around 160,000 Tory party members who are eligible to vote, everything has already been decided. According to Glasgow politics professor John Curtis, Foreign Secretary Liz Truss victory is 95% certain. Truss would have to make spectacular mistakes to defeat her rival Rishi Sunak, or to not defeat him, according to the Dojan of the British polling research. The prospect of the minister's victory alarmed many former party leaders. Over the weekend, longtime minister and Brexit pioneer Michael Gove threw his weight behind Truss's rival Rishi Sunak. The Foreign Secretary's election campaign represented a break from reality. In particular, the planned tax cuts, a favorite topic for Tories, would relieve many wealth managers rather than, than help the poorest in society. And former party leader, leader Michael Howard had already formulated it, yes, let's say harder. He spoke of political suicide. In fact, the population is afraid of huge energy bills this fall. Many of the worst affected pay hardly any taxes anyway due to generous allowances and are instead dependent on state aid. Labour opposition wants to suspend forthcoming price hikes. Promptly, the Labour Party is clearly ahead of the completely self-absorbed governing party by 43 to 28 percent in the polls. The members of the incumbent government shrug their shoulders and point to the coming leadership, probably under trust. The foreign minister is so sure of victory that cabinet lists have been circulating for a long time and the previous career of the favorite is checked for mistakes and omissions. Truss has shown appropriate loyalty under three prime ministers. That's what uh, the spectator journalist Katie Ball says. Will that be enough to demand loyalty in hard times from a group in which the candidate was not even able to convince a third of the members of parliament? The doubts about Truss were expressed most brutally by a former colleague of Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. And doesn't she try to play Thatcher? Truss is dangerously impulsive and stubborn. That's what Matthew Paris told The Times. She has massive hybris and a huge ambition. Her political mind is the size of a pinhead, he said. As with Johnson, the government will be busy trying to get the fickle PM into keeping check. It's not completely tight. It won't work. Stubbornness could certainly work to the advantage of a principled leader. Impulsiveness may just be a cliche attributed to women in politics. On the other hand, there are numerous examples of the foreign minister's fickleness. In the Brexit referendum campaign, the central issue of British domestic and foreign policy, she fought for remaining in the EU in 2016, calling the Leave campaign extreme in yesterday's. In the meantime, she is unrivaled in her enthusiasm for the break with Brussels. At the beginning of Russia's war against Ukraine, Truss encouraged British volunteers to go to the front for Kiev, which caused alarm in the Ministry of Defense. The chief diplomat quickly had to deny herself. At the beginning of August, she advocated a greater regional distribution of salaries in the public sector until critics made it clear that this meant salary cuts for police officers, doctors and nurses in the poorer regions of the country. Truss hastily withdrew the idea. The fact that the previous Brexit chief negotiator wants to terminate the Northern Ireland Protocol and thus a binding international agreement with the European Union may inspire local Protestant hardliners. The inevitable economic turbulence is more likely to fuel the appetite of many Northern Irishmen for, for reunification with Ireland. Truss slammed SNP leader Nicola Sturgeon as an attention seeker who she would simply ignore. That would not be possible for a prime minister because Sturgeon is the undisputed first minister in Edinburgh. And in addition, the statements are politically foolish because they bring additional support to the pro-independence camp in Scotland. None of this seems to be able to stop Truss, not even the zealous support of the incumbent prime minister 
and his closest associates. Johnson may have long been discredited in the country, and many Tories mourn his loss and are therefore voting for the Boris continuity candidate, despite all warnings. Massive drops in real wages, inflation and excess of 10%. That's what we are facing. A railway worker strike shut down the country for days and a strike by dock workers endangered fragile supply chains. And panic spreads far into the affluent bourgeoisie due to, due to massively rising energy prices in the UK. And in many places, England's beaches are unusable because the privatized water companies discharged unfiltered sewage into the sea. Britain has been tumbling from one crisis to the next without a leader this summer. On demand, Prime Minister Boris Johnson remained in office, but is only interested in vacation trips and pleasures such as flying in a typhoon fighter jet. The Conservative ministers shrugged their shoulders and referred to the struggle for a successor in the Tory party, which is not due un to, to end until the beginning of September. The hands of the future government should not be tied, but it will be the same old, same old with her. Meanwhile, the two people who are still vying for top office in the party and government are passing the time with a vacation from reality, as I put it earlier from Michael Gove. The clear favorite trust flatters the approximately 160,000 members of the Tory, but it's just 0.3% of the voting population. And she does that still with the promise of unaffordable tax cuts, while ex-Chancellor of the Exchequer Rishi Sunak wants to criminalize malicious criticism of the country. Really, the British do deserve better than that government that there is to come. And I'll see you in my next video. I'll be back.